shall we begin? All right, all right, all right. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Hail to the king, baby. What's in the box? Precious. I'm vengeance. This is going to be quite a ride. <laughs> everybody and welcome to the movie pit podcast i am your host christian renzeria and this is the podcast where we talk about all of the big breaking movie news items that came out this week we also talk about the movie trailers that came out this week although this week not so much at least at the time of this recording if something comes up you know afterwards then i'll get to it but uh we'll also talk about the movies that are coming out in theaters and streaming for all your viewing pleasures i apologize for missing last week just i just couldn't do it and i just the life got in the way and and that seems to be the the big thing always with the podcast but uh, i am on the road to 200 episodes of movie roundups uh there have been more than 200, 200 episodes of the podcast but uh in terms of movie roundups which is pretty much the main feature of the podcast uh and has been for the last um 6 7 years of the podcast the anniversary is next month for the podcast um we'll you know get to that and, and you know when we get to it but um yeah, it's been two hundred episodes, almost two hundred episodes. So that's pretty cool, uh, and I never thought that I'd get to that point. So um, to get to that point, uh, even with all the breaks and everything that happened, obviously, if I hadn't you know taken any breaks or you know if I had released the podcast uh, every week, um, we'd probably be somewhere closer to I don't know maybe the four or five hundred episode range. But two hundred episodes still a big deal, especially for me. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna take the wins as we get them. But uh, we're going to get to this week's movie news and everything like that. Like I mentioned, uh, no real trailers that came out. There is a, the trailer to Murder Mystery 2 that came out. I never watched the first one, so I you know, I can't really be a good judge of... Um, I can't really be a good judge for the movie uh, and the trailer and everything like that. So I'll probably have to get on that and watch that and maybe even watch part two. Uh, I heard that it was good. Obviously, it's good enough that Netflix wanted a sequel. So, you know, stage of encouragement for, for that end. But but uh, in case you want to watch the trailer, the trailer is down below in the description slash show notes area. Any other trailer that pops up, you know, between now and, and editing and everything like that uh, will also be down there as well. So we're going to go right to the movie news this week somewhat light until obviously the big drop of dc news and we'll get to that in a minute that will be the big movie news items of the week but we're going to talk about the other stuff that came out this week like this one bad boys 4 is officially a go as will smith and martin lawrence are set to return for the fourth movie not only that bad boys for life directors aldi l arby and biala fala are also returning to direct as well the untitled fourth movie is in uh, early pre-production, but no word on when it will actually get going. There was, you know, rumors after part three came out that, you know, part four was uh, was going to happen, how successful it was. And obviously, they, they everyone wanted to come back. Uh, Arby and Fala ended up, you know, doing Miss Marvel. And they did, of course, the Batgirl movie that got, you know, canceled. Uh, and then, you know, they were doing I think they were doing another project as well in between then and the, in between then and now and, and now they're coming back to 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 do uh the sequel and i mean it's it's a good thing you know obviously bad boys for life very successful you know they had a a good grasp of it i think they did a, a pretty good job of it and then you know they i mean they got back will smith obviously will smith was i think the biggest obstacle for them to finally actually do another bad boys movie and then of course you know a lot of the will smith projects kind of either got put in the back burner or delayed so uh you know now it's just a question of you know how many people want to you know work with him again with everything that happened but uh as for bad boys 4 i'm excited for it uh, i like the last bad boys uh movie i thought it was you know fun you know it was it, it was very more fun seeing smith and lawrence back as you know the characters and and going back into that world a little bit um the movie did kind of leave off with a you know potential you know more you know sequels and franchises potentially from from going there so the fact that they're actually uh going to do it is is pretty cool and i think fans will also be uh, pretty happy with it moving on to the next movie news item uh the upcoming biopic about michael jackson titled michael which we uh, i, I probably i don't know if i can't remember if we talked about it the last podcast or if it was going to be something we we're going to talk about because you know i did the outline and everything but anyway the upcoming biopic 
But Michael Jackson, which is titled Michael, has found its lead in Jafar Jackson, which just so happens to be Michael Jackson's own nephew. Jafar is the son of Jermaine Jackson, and Jafar himself is a singer and songwriter in his own right. So, you know, that part will be obviously very easy for him to do. Uh, Michael will be directed by Anton Foucault and will reportedly follow the highs of Jackson's career, look into the controversies of his personal life and the circumstances that led to his untimely death in 2009. Although the Jackson estate is involved, so it should be interesting to see what actually makes it into the movie and what doesn't. Michael will start production later this year. There was a search. It was. It's not a nepotism thing. I guess there was a search that they did, and Jafar Jackson just happened to be a part of that search. And maybe it's nepotism. Who knows? But uh, he got the role regardless. And um, you know they're keeping it in the family a little bit, which could be you know it, it could be nice. You know the the you know, trying. You know obviously Michael Jackson is is you know uh, he's the king of pop because he's. he's one of the most recognizable names in music and the fact that you know there hasn't been a biopic about him it took him it took this long to finally get a biopic about him is you know it, it, it's it's weird that it took this long but uh considering everything in his life and obviously his life is filled with things that is it's filled with things that is worth a movie in itself so Maybe even a couple movies, to to be to be honest. But we're finally getting it, so that that should be pretty cool. Like I mentioned, production will start later this year, so we'll probably hear more about that project uh, later on. Uh, Jason Bateman, his next movie has been decided on. He will direct Warner Brothers' The Pinkerton. The movie will be produced by J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot, which bought the which bought the script two years ago, and is a supernatural revenge western hybrid. That is how they're describing the project. The Pinkertons, by the way, uh, were real people. Uh, they were a private security guard and detective agency established in the, in the U.S. by Scotsman Alan Pinkerton in 1850. Pinkerton became famous when he claimed that he had stopped a plot to assassinate the president-elect at the time, Abraham Lincoln, who then hired Pinkerton and his agents for his personal security during the Civil War. Where the supernatural revenge western hybrid aspect comes from, who knows? <laughs> but it's happening, and Jason Bateman is directing it. Of course, Bateman directed Bad Words, which was his first pictorial effort, uh, obviously being in front of the camera for so long. He then went to direct The Family Fang, and then he won Emmys and SAG Awards for his directed episodes of the hit Netflix series Ozark, which ended. Bateman, more than capable as a director, if you, if you don't know, uh, I haven't seen The Family Fang. I started watching Bad Words, and I don't think I actually finished it. I think I started watching it really late at night, and then I fell asleep. It was good. I just didn't do that. And then, I, of course, you know, the episodes he's directed for Ozark, more than great. So, uh, yeah, he's stepping back behind the camera, which is pretty cool. Guillermo del Toro is still enjoying the success of his stop-motion adaptation of Pinocchio on Netflix. And is looking to adapt another story into the stop-motion style. And I'm going to mispronounce his last name. Uh, this name. I apologize for that. Uh, Kazuo Ishigori, uh, his Nobel or Nobel, sorry, prize-winning novel, *The Buried Giant*. The Toro actually revealed the news in an interview with the Telegraph, and also said he's currently co-writing the script with Dennis Kelly. The adaptation won't be his next movie, and he said his next movie will actually be a live-action movie, although he didn't say what it was. And I just realized I did not look up what it was either. So uh, whatever Del Toro is working on next is going to be live action. But he also admitted that the production on the Buried Giant could start in two years. Because obviously Del Toro is very hands-on and he's uh, very thorough in the work that he does. So it takes a while for his stuff to come out. But you know, obviously when it comes out, it is great and beautiful and awesome to look at. So uh, more kudos to him. And if he wants to go back to the stop motion stuff... Great, awesome, uh, Pinocchio, very good. Um, anyway, moving on, the story of the Buried Giant. Uh, the, bear, uh, the Buried Giant follows an elderly British couple, Axel and Beatrice, as they search for their lost son in post-Arthurian England, where nobody can see or nobody can seem to access their long-term memories thanks to a mist that hangs over the land. They are joined in their journey by a Saxon warrior, his orphan charge, and an illustrious knight. As soon they uncover the dark, troubling history they all share. Um, this sounds pretty good. I've never heard about this story, obviously, um, and um, but Del Toro's involved, and obviously he has a very uh, fond love for stop motion. 
obviously very prevalent in, in Pinocchio and obviously with his style and this, just the, the synopsis of this alone and knowing Del Toro's uh, work, just it, it fits. It seems like it's going to fit. And it's going to be, you know, again, beautiful to look at. Awesome. Something we should immediately look forward toward when it finally comes out. Uh, I want to briefly talk about this one just because it kind of just came out right now as I was recording. Uh, so you should probably know <laughs> that will probably give you a clue on when I'm recording this. The Andrea Riseborough nomination for Best Actress in Two Leslie, uh, which was very, uh, I don't want to say controversial, but it was very much talked about because of how it happened and uh, everything like that. Uh, but the Academy came out uh, today, uh, this week, let's just say, from when you're listening to this, finally, um, that her nomination will not be rescinded. And this comes after news came out that the Academy was going to look in to how she got nominated and how uh, the people that lobbied for her uh, got her to that position to be nominated for Best Actress. Uh, and the word was going around that it could come with a uh what could come with uh the penalty of riseboro getting her best actress nomination revoked i don't know what the process would have been like whether they have nominated someone else whether they have nominated the runner-up uh the person that was you know just on the outside of it where they just would have gone with the number that they have it, it would have been it would have been crazy so riseboro's nomination will not be rescinded nor will action be taken on those who lobbied for her uh, to be nominated. And uh, the CEO of the Academy, Bill Kramer, came out and revealed that the Academy would uh, go into uh, further investigations used by Rosborough and her team going forward in case it was used by future candidates for nomination. So obviously last week I, I couldn't, you know, I didn't do the podcast and obviously last week was the Oscar nominations. Uh, and we'll talk more about the Oscar nominations and, and picks and stuff like that once we get closer to the show. But uh, Riseboro's nomination, like I mentioned, a little, little controversial, I guess, uh, if you want to look at that. It's very talked about, let's put it that way. And the reason it was very talked about is because her nomination just kind of came out of nowhere. No one had heard about Sue Leslie. I haven't heard about Sue Leslie. I run a podcast where the main focus is talking about movie news and movies that are coming in the pipeline and movies that are coming out in theaters and streaming. And I had never heard about Sue Leslie. So... This is a movie that has also in the box office hadn't hasn't made a lot of money. It obviously has made a little bit more money. Got you know like every year uh, when Oscar nominations come out, movies that are nominated kind of get a bump at the box office. This was one of those movies in the theaters that it was still playing in. It's crazy that this has that this has happened because I don't I can't remember if this has ever happened. I, I again this is something I should have looked up, but again this just came out as I was sitting here recording. So I I don't know if it's ever happened before. Um, I'm sure it probably has happened before, but just the way she got nominated and and the way she got nominated was that people like her team were like um, going and like telling people like, hey, you should vote for her and go watch this movie and host like, you know, parties and, you know, lobbying basically for her to get a nomination. I, I haven't seen the movie, have not seen the movie just yet. Uh, but there was a lot of people, a lot of big names, too, that lobbied for Riseboro, that put together, you know, screenings for other people to go watch the movie. This is a big deal. Uh, I, I, I don't know if it's a big deal or not. Obviously, it's a big deal within the Academy because the Academy obviously has a litany of other problems, uh, especially this year uh, with the Oscars with, you know, no real you know, nominees of people of color, more particularly black people of color. This is obviously becoming a problem with the Academy because obviously a few years ago we had Oscars so white. Uh, this year there was no real nominees for best, you know, there was no black uh, lead actors nominees. There was no, you know, female director nominees. Some of them were people or black people. And that is a problem. Obviously we got the Asian representation, but um, considering that um, there the problem has always been with black nominees. It's 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 a linear problem. So anyway, I just wanted to briefly mention that Andrea Rose Burrow's nomination for Best Actress will not be rescinded, but the Academy will be looking at uh, certain actions so it doesn't happen again, which should be interesting in itself, considering, you know, what the Academy has done and, you know, what, you know, they have done in the past and the changes they say and that only go really into effect for like a year and then they go back to their old ways. Anyway. So there you go. That's it. All right. 
big movie news item of the week obviously is after three months of getting the job as the new ceo films co-bosses james gunn and peter saffron have finally revealed their plans for their interconnected universe for their comic book films and tv both in live action and animation and yes ambitious is the word for this plan and i will be honest i kind of like it i'm very intrigued by it because there's a lot of projects there that uh, of groups and characters that i have no idea uh, i'm not familiar not necessarily totally familiar with uh ideas and stories that i am familiar with uh but not in terms of really knowing them uh but i am totally on game for this i'm totally intrigued to where this will go it's different and I think with everything, the DC universe, extending universe, whatever you want to call it, it, it fits and it will be a nice change of pace. So Gunn revealed that he and Saffron have a eight to 10 year plan. And the first part of that plan is chapter one, which they are calling gods and monsters. But before we get to that, I want to mention some other things in, in in related, of course, to, to the DC projects, uh, Gunn says that Matt Reeves' Batman movies and the, the sequel to Joker is under the Elseworlds category. And Elseworlds, obviously, if you're a fan of the comics, you know that Elseworlds is kind of this alternate universe, if you will. Uh, meaning they will live under their own worlds, not connected to this new DC universe of movies. In terms of TV, the uh, T Titans Go, the animated show, will also be part of the Elseworlds category, and that will come into why that's important will come into play right now when I'm um, going into that news. Continuing on that topic, though, Matt Reeves' sequel to The Batman will be titled The Batman Part 2 and has a release date of October 3rd, 2025, which I don't think any I don't think anybody was expecting that to, for that news to come out. But there you go. OK, back to the new universe. Uh, so in the first chapter, the movies will include Superman Legacy, which Gunn is currently writing. And he said that will uh, will be the real start of the DC universe, uh, this new DC universe movies. And he also gave a release date for the movie, which I think was the most surprising, at least for me. July 11th, 2025 is when Superman Legacy will come out. Obviously, the talk was that Henry Cavill is not going to play Superman. Gunn has come out and said that Henry Cavill wasn't fired as Superman. He just wasn't hired for the, uh, the movie. And I guess the story they're telling with uh, Superman Legacy is um, that, that just Henry doesn't fit into... Henry Cavill doesn't fit into the story that he's trying to tell. So... Obviously, we'll have to wait and see what that really means once more information comes out, but we'll go from there. The other movie is The Authority. Now, this is a mix of anti-heroes who take matters into their own hands, despite what governments advise. I don't know anything about the group. Uh, apparently, some people were excited for this. Uh, obviously, I don't read a lot of um, DC comics, but uh, and I don't know anything about this group, but uh, The Authority is, is, is that. Uh, there will be a new Batman and Robin movie titled The Brave and the Bold. This is based off the Grant Morrison run and follows Batman training his son Damien, who is now taking over the mantle of Robin, who was raised an assass as an assassin because he's raised uh, under the um, the League of Shadows uh, and, or the League of Assassins, however, whichever one you want to call it, uh, or whichever one they'll, they'll end up calling it. Uh, but he's raised an assassin, and obviously Batman doesn't want uh, doesn't want him to be an assassin. He's trying to teach him better ways. So Brave and the Bold, um, I think I actually read the first two issues of that. I never read the complete run. I actually did really like that. I wanted to go back and, and read that. Um, but it was very good from what I read so far, and I heard it continues to be better. So there you go, the Brave and the Bold. There's a new Supergirl movie coming, and it's based off the Tom King comic book series, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. The story sees Supergirl, who is raised on a rock, a chip off uh, Krypton, who watched everyone around her die. Everyone she has ever cared about has been killed in, in the first 14 years of her life. And then she somehow comes to Earth. And uh, Gunn described her as a very hardened version of Supergirl, somewhat cynical of how she looks at the world. Uh, so that would be very interesting to see. And then uh, we have a Swamp Thing movie coming, which is pretty cool. And now we'll see the dark origins of the character come to life. Obviously, there has been Swamp Thing movies in the past. There was that short-lived CW series that was very good. Um, but uh, we're getting a full-fledged movie into that. On the TV side, I know this is a movie podcast, but you know we got to talk about the DCU because, I mean, like I mentioned, um, 
uh, these, this universes will all be connected in some way, or this universe will all be connected as opposed to what it was before. So on the TV side, there is a Peacemaker spinoff about Amanda Waller called Waller, which uh, Viola Davis will come back to play Amanda Waller. Paradise Lost, which takes place on Themyscira. So that would be very cool. Uh, of course, the, the place where Wonder Woman comes from. Uh, Booster Gold is another TV series in the works. Booster Gold is a superhero from the future uh, who is a quote-unquote loser that comes back into the present to obviously make himself feel better. Um, and he and James Gunn mentioned imposter syndrome um, on that, so that would be very interesting to see. I was kind of another probably peacemaker take on, on that. Uh, and then finally, we have our Lanterns show, the Green Lantern show finally happening. That has been in the works for so long, it's not even funny, but it looks like they're finally going to do it. It's called Lantern. It will follow Hell Jordan and Jon Stewart. There will be other Lanterns in the mix, according to the gun, but the, that will be the focus. And he compared it to True Detective, which is very, very interesting. Um, so it'll be very interesting to kind of see where that story takes place, how that story takes place. You know, a True Detective, if there's a crime, obviously the Lanterns are kind of the police force of the intergalactic you know world and stuff like that and their quadrants of where they uh do stuff so that would be a very interesting show once that happens on the animated side there was only one project announced and that was creatures commandos which gun is also currently writing and that follows a bunch of the monster characters apparently weasel from the suicide squad will be a part of that as well on the writing side of the writer's room gun and saffron have put together a very good writer's room Christina Hodson, who has already written Birds of Prey, she's written Bumblebee, she's one of the, basically one of the big new writers on the block, and to have her part of that is really cool. Jeremy Slater, who has uh, written and created Moon Knight and the Umbrella Academy, he's on board on there. Tom King, who wrote the comic book series that Supergirl's based off, he's part of the, uh, of the room. Uh, Christina Henry, or Crystal Henry, apologies, uh, who wrote the Watchmen TV series, is also part of the crew. She's actually one of the writers on Waller and Drew Goodard, uh, finally. Uh, Cloverfield, The Cabin in the Woods, The Martian, Bad Times at the Hour Royale, and Netflix's Daredevil. He's also part of the writer's room. That is a solid group right there, along with Gunn and anybody else who they decide to bring in. Should be interesting. No directors yet announced. Uh, part of this crew and anything like that so that will be interesting to see you know who they bring in with that but gun was very uh prominent in saying that this new uh universe they're putting together is all about story story is the important thing and story is the thing that's going to drive the universe as a whole so that would be very cool to see uh, when it comes to casting they didn't reveal anything but some things were made clear which is why i mentioned tv when it comes to that Anyone cast on the DC TV side as a character will also play that character on the film side. So whoever they, you know, whoever they cast as their TV actors in Lanterns, per se, let's say, uh, is going to be the Lanterns in the movies if they ever show up. That's pretty interesting because obviously there's always been that, there's always been that, you know, change. Like, oh, like, you know, someone's playing, you know, this character on a TV show, they show up. In the movies played by someone else and we just have to, you know, acknowledge the fact that, you know, they're not, you know, playing the same character or anything like that. So that's the interesting thing. Uh, the other thing is that no actor will play two parts. Meaning, all that talk about Jason Momoa no longer playing Aquaman and playing Lobo instead is not happening. So there is that. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe they'll do something wacky, but in terms of actors playing multiple roles, that is no longer the case. Actors will not be playing two roles uh, on that. And obviously... And that means if an actor is voicing someone in an animation and they come into live action and that character comes into live action, they will be played by that character voice. So that would be very, very cool. Again, this is all this is all really ambitious and I and I really dig it. And finally, when it comes to the already established actors a part of the universe, Gal Gadot, Henry Cavill, Ben Affleck, everybody else, there was you know, obviously that rumor that they were all not returned. Gunn and Saffron have said that the doors open for them to come back. But as of right now, that the stories they're telling, they don't line up to bringing them back at this point, like Henry Cavill for Superman Legacy. So they didn't fire them. They're just not hired for the projects they are doing right now. When it comes to Ezra Miller, right now, everyone is focusing on Miller and him getting better or they getting better. Apologies. They getting better. After Miller gets better and everything like that, they will discuss everything. And they've said that right now, the focus is, is on Miller getting the help he needs or they need and figuring it out from there and they will figure it out once all that's all that's good gun in that video that came out said that the flash 
is kind of the turning point and will change the way and kind of reset sort of everything. So obviously Barry Allen, the flash will play a, a pivotal factor in that. And he's already watched it. And he said, James Gunn um, said that the flash movie is great. It's a great movie. We'll have to wait and see. And obviously all the problems that Ezra Miller brought on, it's going to play a factor. Whether it plays a tremendous factor is the question, but there you go. Uh, so that's all That's all I have, at least right now. Obviously, I think more things will come trickling out as um, stuff so, stuff is still getting written down and everything. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. You know, I, we, everyone has been very picky, has been very uh, harsh, let's just say. I've been very harsh of the DC. I I've, have said multiple times on this podcast that the DC Extended Universe, as it was called at, at that point, was like a chicken with its head cut off. Because they were just announcing projects and, and projects would happen and then projects would be delayed. And then, you know, just a bunch of stuff was getting in the way. They were getting in their own way, basically. They didn't have anybody in particular that was there to set the record straight, to set, you know, the ship, quote unquote, straight for them. And because they didn't have that, it felt uneven. And we had all these different universes. We had... You know, the Arrowverse, as even Gunn even pointed out, like they had the Arrowverse, they had the Whedonverse, they had the Snyderverse, they had all these different verses, all these different interpretations they needed for it to be streamlined. And that's what Gunn and Saffron were brought in for. And that's what they've done. And they've, and this ambitious plan they have is great. Now the D, the TV side and the movie side will all be in one universe pretty much. So I'm all for that. And obviously we have like all like the, the Batman spinoff shows, like the Penguin series coming out. That's going to be part of the Elseworlds stuff. So Gunn, you know, I mentioned when he was first hired, I was like, I, I thought that Gunn and Saffron coming in was a great move because I said that Gunn was going to be the person that was going to streamline uh, and write the ship and being him being a writer and a director, there were people were going to trust him. Writers are going to come in, directors are going to come in, actors are going to come in, and they were going to trust what he was doing because he's done this thing for so many times. He's looking at it not as someone who has never directed a movie or has never written a movie or what have you. He's coming in as a fan, and he is coming in as someone who has seen everything from afar and, and has come from, you know, I know we're talking about DC, but he's come from Marvel. He's sees, He's seen how it can be done. Whether you like the Marvel Cinematic Universe or not, whether you like how the you know Phase Four went or whatever, he's seen how it's done. He's seen how you build out a universe. He's seen how connected a universe can be. He's gonna bring that to the DC universe now. Good or bad, that's still up in the air. But from what we can see right now, it looks like it's gonna be better. It's ambitious. Because he's bringing characters and he's bringing the ideas that, you know, I don't think anybody expected him to do. So there is, you know, there's that. And obviously he's got to deal with everything like that. Obviously there was the Zachary Levi stuff and Gunn in a very, I would say, very, I don't want to like say political answer. But he, he was very honest and was like, I can't keep changing plans every time an actor says something that I don't agree with. And obviously Gunn has his history of saying things that were not, you know politically correct at the time and he has you know since then apologized and apologized he has made amends basically in a lot of people's eyes and and, and I, I if you don't forgive him that's totally okay that's well within your right but um you know he's come out and said about Zachary Lee. I was like look listen like I'm not gonna change things for the better and you know he he mentioned that you know Shazam already kind of lives outside the world a little bit so it'll be a little easier to if they need to Write him out, I guess, maybe. I don't, I don't know. He didn't say that. That's just me kind of, you know, talking. And then you got Blue Beetle uh, coming out as well. And he was very excited for, for Blue Beetle, he, you know, from his words. So, and then, of course, Aquaman coming out at the end of the year. Uh, and the plan for Aquaman was always going to be a trilogy. So, Jason Momoa was in at least for one more movie. So, yeah. Ambitious is the word. I like it. I'm intrigued by it. I'm intrigued by the groups that I don't know. I'm intrigued by the stories that I don't know. I'm very interested in seeing where the stories go. I'm all in on this. And even if it was, even if Gunn wasn't involved, I, I don't know, I, I would say, uh, and I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> also, like, I was going to say, like, even if Gunn wasn't involved, 
and they laid out this plan, I, I would still be intrigued. But I don't know. I don't, I don't know <laughs> if that would be the case because it would definitely depend on who was leading the ship. I think Gunn being, Gunn and Saffron both being there and leading the ship is, um, is what's making this all interesting and intriguing, especially for a lot of fans. So far, from what I've seen, uh, the reaction so far has been pretty good. A lot of people have been, a lot of people are digging this. So, um, hopefully that's still the case. Hopefully when stuff starts coming out, will still be the case. Obviously, uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods is the first new thing that's coming out. There's a new trailer dropped um, that we didn't get to talk about in the podcast, but that trailer dropped. And uh, I put my thoughts up on the on the Twitter page. We got Blue Beetle next. That's the next big DC project. And again, we got um, Aquaman coming out at the, end of the, at the end of the year. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So that's all the movie news that I have, at least at the time of this recording. Obviously, based off how I'm recording this, how early I'm recording this as well, at least for me, uh, the podcast will be coming out a little earlier just because I got some things going on and I know I won't have time to do some last minute editing. I don't want to fall into the trap I did last week. So if anything big drops, obviously, uh, if I have time, I'll put it right here. If not, uh, you can follow the Twitter page for all the big movie news over there. And just like that, reports have come out that James Mangold is currently in talks to direct DC's newly announced Swamp Thing. <laughs> Mangold is putting the finishing touches, of course, on his next film, which is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. But he does have some history with comic book properties as Mangold directed The Wolverine and Logan. The character of Swamp Thing, I didn't really do a discussion on it. <laughs> in the little bit that uh, before that I recorded has had a great history in the comics and became very popular. Uh, and the character was introduced in the seventies, like late seventies. And then in the eighties in the early eighties, Alan Moore, of course, the man who, you know, came up with uh watchman and v, the, the Viva Vendetta, the graphic novel and a bunch of other stuff. He had a run uh, of Swamp Thing and, and that run made it extremely popular made the character extremely popular and the character itself it's uh alex olsen he's a scientist who gets severely burned by chemicals and merges with the very swamp that he is studying after he dives into the waters to save himself from the chemicals that are burning on him and then of course he becomes the swamp thing wes craven took a crack at the character in 1982 with a movie that was uh apparently popular even though not a lot of people remember it i I knew there was a Swamp Thing movie. I actually forgot that Wes Craven directed it. It got a sequel, apparently. It also got a TV series, a short-lived one, I, I suppose. Uh, but then in 2019, there was another short-lived series, but that was very popular amongst fans and non-fans that just wanted the series to continue and wanted it to keep going. And then when you know, it got canceled, people were very upset about it. But um, I think the 2019 series was the closest thing to like the original like alan moore kind of character and everything like that as for mangold he's a great pick you know logan like i mentioned wolverine has its moments he's also directed um girl interrupted which was a while ago but walk the line which is the uh the uh johnny cash uh biopic with joaquin phoenix and wreath witherspoon the 310 to yuma, yuma remake that i really really like and at one point i will discuss that on the podcast and then uh Vord, uh ford fee Ford, Ford V Ferrari. I don't know why that was so hard to say. And that was the last thing he directed. So Mangold, great pick, uh, especially if they, you know, actually pick him. He's still in talks about it. He like, I think tweeted out like a picture of it and James Gunn like retweeted it and liked it. So they're currently in talks. Uh, so hopefully we get the news that he is officially the director. Cause I think that is a great pick for a Swamp Thing movie. Little tidbits coming out. And if they're already looking for a director, this project could be be a little bit more further than we think it is or maybe they're just bringing a mangle to see what his vision is and then go from there i don't think he has anything i think he has like a couple projects lined up and i don't think they're anywhere near like completion wise so this could probably jump up on the docket especially if they want to get swamp thing out within the next uh few years because i think that would be really cool but james mangold swamp thing totally game for it so far the reaction online has been also very positive so they could start really they could start really well if they, you know, hire Mangold to direct Swamp Thing. I'm all for it. People are all for it. Give the people what they want, gun. Let's get to the movies that are coming out in theaters this weekend and streaming for all your viewing pleasures. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. All right. So I got one streaming movie. 
uh, that I was able to find, and it is uh, over on Netflix. It's called The Viking Wolf. It is a Norwegian movie. It's actually Norwegians or Norway's Norwegians. It's actually Norway's, at least according to uh, what I was able to, to the report I found, it's Norway's first werewolf movie. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and that will be coming out on Netflix. It follows uh, Thale, I think that's how you pronounce her name, uh, moves to a small town after her mother gets a new job with the local police. After a student is killed brutally, she becomes a key witness, and the only thing she saw was a wolf. So there you go. It looks pretty cool. They released a trailer this week, and it looks it looks pretty cool. I'm not going to put the trailer down below just because the movie's coming out at the, <laughs> this week. So you can probably just go watch for yourself um, or see a little preview on, on Netflix. But there you go. That is your Netflix movie and your streaming movie of the week. Let's move on to the movies that are coming out in theaters. Um, in theaters and VOD is Baby Ruby. This is a tightly scripted world of a vlogger and influencer unravels. After she becomes a mother, the cast includes Kit Harrington and Naomi Merlet. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. Uh, noted playwright Bess Wool makes her directorial debut for this movie. It looks like a thriller. It doesn't look like a complete horror movie. It does look like a thriller uh, from the trailers that I that I or the trailer that I saw. So, uh, Baby Ruby out in theaters and VOD. Uh, in case you want to go check that out. And your limited release is Freedom's Path. Uh, a soldier deserts from from battle and soon discovers a true co- the true cost of war through a young heroic black man who teaches him the real meaning of freedom. Garen Howell is one of the soldiers and R- R- R.J. Siler uh, is the other one. R.J. Siler killing it in the independent scene. Uh, for those who probably need a face in the name, he was uh, Billy in the uh, uh, in the Power Rangers reboot that came out a few years ago. Uh, he's been in other stuff. I just, you know, he was also in White Boy Rick. Uh, he was in Meet Earl and the Dying Girl. That's kind of where I know him from. I know he's been in a bunch of other stuff where he's been uh, doing really good. So he's he's a really big independent guy. But uh, he does a lot of independent movies. But he's very good. And, and whenever he pops up, I'm like, oh, this he's, he's going to kill it in this role. So there you go. There is Freedom's Path. Uh, your wide releases this week. The first one is 80 for Brady. This is about a group of friends who made it their lifelong mission to go to the Super Bowl and meet NFL superstar Tom Brady. The cast includes Sally Field, Jade Fonda, Lily Tallman, Sarah Gilbert, and Rito Moreno. If that is not enough to get you in a movie theater, or at least to watch it when it comes out on VOD, I don't know what is, uh, unless you're not a fan of football or unless you're not a fan of Tom Brady. This is a true story. This is based off a true story about these women that did this and... Um, it's obviously took place years ago because it is when Tom Brady was still a part of the Patriots. So there is that. But there you go. There's 80 for Brady. And the big movie, at least one of the big movies for me anyway, that came, that's coming out this week, is Knock at the Cabin. This is the new movie by M. Night Shyamalan, who directed it and co-wrote it. And it's based off the novel at the, Ca- the Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. While vacationing, a girl and her parents are taken, into, are taken hostage by armed strangers who demand that the family make a choice to avert the apocalypse. The cast includes Jonathan Groff, Ben Aldridge, Nikki Ankumbo bird Rupert Grint, Abby Quinn, and Dave Batista. This has been getting some pretty big praise online. Uh, it's, of course, M. Night Shyamalan, so it can go either way. But the praise so far that I've seen online has been um, pretty good. And a lot of it is going, of course, to Dave Bautista as well. Uh, people are saying he's very good. Dave Bautista getting the recognition he deserves because that man has put in the work. And it's finally, finally people are seeing it for, for who he is. He's an actor. He's not a WWE superstar who became an actor. No, he is full-blown actor. So there you go. Knock at the Cabin is your big movie of the week. Your other uh, release of the week is 80 for Brady. Those are your wide releases anyway. Your limited releases are Freedom's Path and Baby Ruby. That's also out on VOD if you want to go check that out. And then on Netflix, you have Viking Wolf. That is it, everybody. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. I very much appreciate it, as always. You guys are awesome. No matter where you're listening to this podcast, whether it be on YouTube, whether it be on Apple Podcasts, on Stitcher, on Spotify, wherever it may be. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I always much appreciate it. If No matter where you're listening, um, hit that subscribe button, hit that comment button, hit that uh, follow button. Leave a rating and review. That's always appreciated. And uh, go follow everything on social media wise. All the links are down below in the description of that show notes area. Trailers are down there as well. Um, yeah. So thank you guys so much. Uh, next week, I will probably de- most definitely have a review for Knock at the Cabin because I'm definitely going to go watch that this weekend. Already got plans. Already got my tickets. So I'm definitely going to go review that. 
And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast this week. And I will see you guys hopefully next week and uh, maybe somewhere down the line. If you want to hear more of my voice and more voices of people who know what they're doing, I am uh, currently on three films and a podcast is episode uh, for their auction draft of 2023 movies. That's up on their YouTube page. I will put that link. Uh, I'll put that link down below in the description slash show notes area. I'll put the YouTube link. Uh, obviously, if you want to go through their channel and uh, figure out uh, where they are and listen to them, uh, they're pretty much everywhere. You can listen to your podcasts, but um, three films in the podcast, their auction draft uh, for the movies of 2023. I was a part of it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I always have a lot of fun with the three films guys, but doing a draft with them is always also a lot of fun. It's chaotic. It's crazy, <laughs> but uh, I, I had so much fun. I can't wait to do another one with those guys and be on their podcast uh, probably relatively soon. If you want to you know, go over there, give them some, you know, subscribe to them, and you'll probably hear my voice again over there and see my face. So, yeah. All right. That's it, finally. Thank you guys so much for listening. I will appreciate you guys. Stay warm if you are in you know, that cold spot. We're currently in it a little bit here in the Chicagoland area. But, yeah. Have a good weekend. Be good people. And, as always, go Watch some movies. Woo woo! Yeah! Give it up! Movies!